In this video, I'll be looking at how to pull course learning outcomes from the institutional bank of course learning outcomes. I'm here in my sandbox course. This would be done from the course you want to put the outcomes in. The first step will be to retrieve the course learning outcomes from the institutional bank of course learning outcomes. Do, do not add outcomes here from the outcome button. Go to find on the right. The outcomes should already be there. If they're not, uh, then let me know and I'll add them in. The outcomes have to come from here in order for the assessment data to flow back to the institutional level. Now what I'm doing here is I'm drilling down from account standards to College of Micronesia through to the divisions, business education, math science, nursing, public health, uh, and finally down to the two-letter prefix for the course. That's how the outcomes are organized. So it's a drill down through the division level to the two letters for the course. I'm going to just grab my MS150.1 outcome, scroll to the bottom, and tell it to import it. This will bring it down from the institutional level into my course where I can use it at the course level. So I'm in my sandbox course. There's the outcome. Only the course learning outcomes are here in this uh, bank of learning outcomes. So only the ones that are uh, course learning outcomes at the uh, course level are here. You can have specific learning outcomes. And you can see that here. I added these manually by doing plus outcome right here. And then you can set up your own outcome. I set these up so that I could also evaluate specific learning outcomes. These three came from the institutional bank. I imported those using the find button here, brought them in through find. Here you can see at my physical science course, I'm only using the course learning outcomes. These were also pulled from the institutional bank of learning outcomes. So with them installed here in my uh, sandbox course, I can now use them. Now, for now, I'll just use this one. The first thing I want to show you is I can now use this outcome in a rubric. I'll go to rubrics, tell it I want to add a rubric, and I'm going to find outcome. I have only the one outcome, so I'll go ahead and I'll import that into my rubric. I can have other criteria in my rubric. Um, for now, I'll just do that one. Uh, and I, I'll leave it some rubric. You can give it a meaningful name. Create the rubric, and there's my course rubric. I can now use this rubric in an assignment. I'll go to Assignments. I'll tell it, yeah, give me a new assignment. I'll call this my new assignment. Here I'll have a description of what the assignment should, what the student should do. Farther down, I can set up the points and how I'm going to have them submit it. Maybe it's an online file upload, fairly normal type of submission for my courses, and due dates. Once I've got all of that set, I then say save. Rubrics are not attached at that place. They're attached here. Once I've saved the assignment, set it up and saved it, then I can attach a rubric here at the bottom. I'll click on this. It'll start off by giving me a default rubric, but I want to find a rubric because I already made one in my sandbox course called Some Rubric, a poor name choice. And I'll say use this rubric. Now there's one small subtlety to this. This rubric will not be used to grade the assignment. Currently the assignment is set to be graded by me manually at 10 points. This is intentional. This is so that I can use a rubric separate from whatever the points are in the assignment. If I want the rubric to actually grade the assignment, I'll go into Edit Rubric and tell it, Use this rubric for assignment grading. So I clicked on the, let me show you that again. I'll t click on the pencil on the right and then tell it to use rubric for assignment grading. If the rubric is already being used in another course, then you'll get a warning that the rubric is already in use and editing it will create a copy of the rubric. Just say OK. It doesn't create a copy of the rubric to use the rubric for grading. That message is slightly misleading. 
But now I'll simply say change assignment points to match rubric change because I'm letting my rubric grade my assignment. Uh, that's what the way I typically use the rubrics, but you don't have to use them that way. And so now I've got the rubric attached to an assignment using a course learning outcome pulled from the institutional bank. And that will then flow data back to the institutional level just for this. Anything else in my rubric won't be. Let me show you a couple other rubrics. This is a rubric in uh, statistics. The first two outcomes are from the institutional bank and how I mark those will flow back to the institutional level to assessment. These three do not. They stay local. A more complicated uh, rubric is this one. This rubric uses both criteria and outcomes. And the criteria that you see here were ones that I entered. You'll notice they don't have to have the same number of uh, items and the rating scale. They can have different rating scales. And so at the very bottom, you'll see that there is a the course learning outcomes for the course. They've been put into that there. These four are the only four that flow back to the institutional level. These mark the assignment, but they are don't go back to the institutional level. They aren't part of the institutional assessment system. They're just things I use to mark it. So your rubrics can be very complicated and very involved should you wish to. The key is to have some of those outcomes that were pulled from the institutional level. You can see that here in this course. Uh, I've got those four outcomes and they came from, I didn't enter them, they came from the account standards college all the way down in here. So this is where they came from. I imported them from here. And so they've already been imported in and they're being used in a rubric. And that attaches course learning outcomes that produce assessment for the institution for assignments. Let me look now at quizzes. Quizzes work a little differently. And here I'll be using what are called classic quizzes. I'm not going to make a quiz right away. The way to utilize quizzes more effectively and more efficiently is to go to the hot dog menu on the right. Some people call it hot dog, three dots, vertical ellipsis. You'll see manage question banks. I'll go to manage question banks. I am going to go ahead and add a question bank and I'm going to call it MS. You can call it anything you want, but I am going to organize my question banks around the course learning outcomes. Course learning outcome number one will be a question bank. And press enter, and I've now got a question bank. I'll click on the MS150.1, and I'll, on the right side, remember, look at the top. I'm working in the question banks, not the quizzes. On the right side, you will see aligned outcomes. So I'll click on align outcome, pick the MS150, Notice I do have to set a mastery level. I'm going to set it at 80%. That's the mastery level 4 out of 5 that's set for the uh, for these outcomes. But I can specify a different independent mastery level for my own use at the course level. And so I now import the outcome. And I now have the MS-150 outcome uh, attached to this question bank. And it's here that I'll actually add my questions. And so these will, uh, these will re-alphabetize. So you'll want to develop some kind of a system to hold them in an order that makes sense to you. I'm going to do chapter one, section one, question one. And I'm using a lead zero so that I can go up to chapter 11 in my course. And you can see I've already got that one with that name, but this is a new course. So I'll, this is a sample size question. Maybe it's multiple choice and what is the sample size? Da, 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 da. So this is how I set up a question. You have all the different options here that you want. So I'm going to build my questions here. I'm going to set the number of points I wanted to have here. I've got the answers here. I'm not going to go over how to set up quizzes. That's really not the intent of this particular video. But once I'm done, I then update the question. Now this question is sitting in a question bank aligned to an outcome. I can now go back to my quizzes down here and I can now make my quiz. 
this I'm using classic quizzes here not new quizzes new quizzes do not currently report out their student learning outcomes and the banks are still under the bank work is still under development so I'm going to use classic quizzes in here and then I, I give it a name and I give it all the descriptive information down here the usual and the questions uh, all I need to do is go to the right side I, I don't build questions here I just go to find questions and I can pull that this is the one I just made in my sandbox course notice I have access to all of my question banks here this is the power of banks if I built banks as I have done these are all notices are matching to my course learning outcomes course learning SS SE 131 2 3 these two the questions are all banked in 2 and 3 because of the nature of this course learning outcomes and how they're evaluated I can now pull questions into from any of my courses to any of my other courses. This is the one I just built for the sandbox course, and I'll simply say add. I click on it. Say okay, I want that one. I pick which ones I want, and then add the questions. And the question gets added to my quiz. I can now edit the question locally without affecting what's in the bank. Let me go ahead and save this. That question can be edited. And the bank itself, if I go back to quizzes, the bank won't be affected. The other thing to remember is that if I edit the question in the bank, it will not affect the one in the quiz. That's a one-time uh, you know, copy down from your bank to the quiz, and then the two are disconnected again. But the connection to the outcome remains. As long as I pull this question down, this outcome will be fed the results from the quiz students taking the quiz will be fed back out uh, through the institutional system so I can report out quizzes I can report out assignments again key steps are import the outcomes from the institutional level using the find function to get your outcomes into your course level then they can either go into rubrics or they can go into uh, question banks how you set up the question banks is up to you but as I've said my question banks are usually set up around they come over to quizzes my question banks are generally set up around my learning outcomes so there's my question banks 150.3 is not a quiz that's part of the presentations the students do so it's not carrying any questions the questions are sitting in outcome one and outcome two and I can of course go back and edit questions up in the bank and that's what I do if I find a mistake in a question I'll edit it uh, up in the bank I'll have to remember to edit it down in the quiz if I've already set up the quiz if I find an error in a quiz I can edit the quiz and go back up and edit the bank separately so that then provides data for the assessment system out of the institutional level uh, again only the outcomes that are brought in from the college level report back nothing else reports back to the institutional level and you can have other things in your rubrics besides course level outcomes they can be quite complicated sorts of affairs and some of my rubrics are such as this physical science uh, lab report rubric is 80 it's still easy and fast to mark by point and click. So that's all I wanted to cover today. As I'll take a look at uh, how we can get outcomes in at the uh, course level coming out of the institutional bank. Again, if your course learning outcomes are not in the institutional bank, please let me know. Uh, the goal is to get all of them in there. As of the time of the recording of this video, they are not all in there not uh, not as of yet thank you for listening